You're listening to Crosstalk, Season 1, Episode 6. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you, Jesus. Welcome to Crosstalk, where faith becomes life by equipping you for success in your family, ministries, and life. I'm Jason Sism, and I'm your host. We're going to do something a little different today, and actually this is going to be something brand new for our podcast, is I'm including video. So if you want to stop listening to the audio, you can certainly do that. Go over to my website at jbcism.com, click on today's episode, and you will have a YouTube video there for you to watch. So I'm really excited because we're going to dive back into the book of Esther, and oh, here's my Bible, I lost it for a second. Today's episode, I want to talk about the choice of leadership. And in our series on Esther, we've been looking at choices, and we've been looking at what what choices we as individuals have to make. And sometimes God will put us in a position to make a choice. And sometimes we have the choice to either listen to what God is saying, or sometimes we have the choice of not listening. And usually that does not go very well for us. But I want to talk about the choice of leadership today. And I think very, very few people have the will, the capacity to even show up or follow through in a single day when it comes to leadership. And sometimes as leaders, we're actually put into the position and and, and we really don't know why we're in the position of leadership, but we have been placed in this position of leadership. And now we have to follow up. We have to follow through and we have to see what's going to happen. And the question I think a lot of us ask, especially those of us who've never really been leaders before, is what does it truly mean to be a leader? How do we lead somebody effectively in our areas of influence? And I think this is a question we have to ask ourselves, and it's a question I know I ask myself every day day as a leader. What does it take to be a leader? How do I take what I'm doing right now in my leadership, in my areas of influence, in the people I'm working with, and and how do I help them move to the next level? How do I help them become effective individuals in their life? And so when I focus on my ministry here on jbcism.com, or I focus on my ministry at Life Church. I have to come to the conclusion that I have to begin leading myself personally, grow personally in my own daily life as I help others grow in their own daily lives and in their ideas and in their aspirations as leaders. See, our our growth as leaders is not to be about fame or being famous or having the recognition or even just get that huge paycheck that we're really wanting, make a lot of money. But rather, I think it's about purpose. And, and when we understand what our purpose is and we understand that our lives revolve around that purpose, I think we can actually become better leaders. We can become better individuals. But I think so many times it's easy to lose sight of that purpose and it's easy to, to get stuck and allured by our quick fixes and and I want that quick idea, that quick fix on how to become a better leader right now at this very moment. And I think what we fail to realize is it actually takes time. It takes commitment. It takes that motivation to move forward and become a better leader. And so what does it mean to be a leader who chooses? A leader who maybe we don't understand why we're in the position we're in. But how do I become better at what I do right now? And so I want to look back at the, the book of Esther. And, and, and in Esther chapter 2, I'm going to read verse 19. And it says this, When the virgins were assembled a second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. But Esther had kept her secret family background and nationality, just as Mordecai had told her to do. For she continued to follow Mordecai's instructions as she had done when Mordecai was bringing her up. During the time Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, 
Two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway became angry and conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. But Mordecai found out about the plot, told Queen Esther, who in turn reported it to the king, giving credit to Mordecai. And when the report was investigated and found to be true, the two officials were hanged on the gallows. All this was recorded in the Book of the Annals, in the presence of the king. So here we have Esther, who Esther is an individual who's been kind of thrust into a role of leadership. And, and I really believe because the king of Persia was involved, Esther really didn't have a choice but to be brought before the king as one of the women in this pageant. And the king found favor with her because she was beautiful to look at. And Esther, maybe she didn't want to do this. And maybe Mordecai, who's her older cousin, said, we really don't have much recognition within the Jewish community. And, and I, I want to make a name for myself. And I want to make a name for you, Esther, so that you can go further than what I've been able to go. And so I'm going to put you into this position so that, that you can actually affect change in the lives of the Jewish people. And so whether Esther really understood what was happening or not, she was thrust into a leadership position. Maybe she really didn't want to be put in that position. And so we, we come to this point in the story where Mordecai uncovers a conspiracy, a conspiracy to kill the king of Persia. And Mordecai, maybe out of his own selfish ambition, because if the king dies, the queen goes away and a new king takes the place. And, 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 and Esther no longer has that place of leadership because she's replaced as queen. And so, so maybe it was through selfish motivation that Mordecai confronted Esther and said, listen, this, this is happening. These guys want to kill the king. They, they're conspiring. They hate the king. They don't like him at all. And so Esther then goes to the king and says, King Xerxes, I got to let you know, my cousin Mordecai came to me and he said, um, these guys are trying to kill you. And, and, and not just kill you, but these are two of your officers, two of your most trusted men that probably stand beside you every day. You see, Esther had a choice. She had a choice to either go for the simple option and just sit on it. Let the king die because then she can get rid of this position. Maybe she didn't like the position. Maybe she didn't want to be the queen. Even though it came with perks, she really didn't like the idea of being queen. So maybe she could have taken the easy road and, and actually stopped the idea of being queen and just forgot about what her cousin said and then fall to the background. And I think we as leaders have choices. And how do we get the best results in the positions that we're in. And, and I think sometimes we can take the minimal effort and not pursue an idea, not pursue something that maybe someone told us, and we falter. And we wonder why our leadership isn't going anywhere, why are, there's not growth happening. You see, when we understand what our purpose is, and I believe Esther probably understood better than most people what her purpose was. And her purpose was to be the queen for the Jewish people. And I don't think she had it in her mind that she was going to be queen of Persia, but I think she probably had it in mind, and, and this is probably a better reflection of who Esther is, had it in her mind to be queen of the Jews. And so, Instead of being allured by a quick fix, Esther decided to take the hard approach and actually go to the king and say, King, these men are after you and they want to take your life. And they're, and they're probably going to try to do it secretly. And they're going to off you really quick. And that's not going to go well for you. And it's easier 
to go the easy route. <laughs> it doesn't take a lot of effort. And, and so Esther, when she approaches the king, we find that later the king only lets the queen come before him if she's called. And so we find later in the story, when, when we come to the evil villain Haman, Esther actually takes the bold approach and actually comes before the king without being invited. You know, take a look at Queen Vashti. If you remember when we talked about her a few weeks ago, Queen Vashti did not come before the king when called, and she was banished. So how much worse would have it been for Esther to come before the king without being called? She either could have been dead or banished, and, and the king would have started all over. But when we understand that when God has the big picture in mind, Everything works out. See, the Bible says everything works together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purposes. You see, it's easy to say yes, but sometimes the kind of leader that we need to be is, is to create a well-oiled machine. And sometimes that takes the hard approach. Sometimes that means we got to say no to a few people. Or sometimes we have to say yes to a few people. Or sometimes we have to take something off our plate and actually delegate it out to somebody else to take care of. You see, there are all these choices that we have to do. And you and I could be doing a lot less by having and empowering other people to do the work of the ministry. And that's really what it's all about. And, and sometimes leadership, I believe, is a very, very lonely road. It's a, it's a road that... We tend to walk alone. Not a lot of people really want to get into leadership. And sometimes they, they find that it's really too difficult to be in. And so when we as pastors or leaders in our churches ask somebody to take a leadership role, sometimes people take a back seat and they're like, eh, I don't know about this. But I think one thing that we can do, and, and, and this is something that, that we've been doing at Life Church, and, and I think it works really, really well, is we actually go to people and we say, hey, we, we are shorthanded in the children's ministry. And I'm wondering if you would temporarily serve in this area just for a short time. It doesn't have to be long, but would you temporarily serve in this area? And then when the time is up and we find somebody who's better gifted for this area, we can go to them. Thank you so much for serving in this area. We appreciate your efforts. We appreciate your sacrifice. And I think that builds people up. And, and, and so the choice we have as leaders is, is to not only follow through with our leaders, but we also have the choice to build them up, edify them, equip them, and send them out to be the best leaders that they can actually be. See, following through as a leader can be one of our greatest assets as a leader. Great leaders ask questions. They evaluate the present, they plan for the future, and they navigate towards specific solutions. And sometimes those specific solutions is taking a moment and allowing, allowing our thoughts to become succinct. Does that make sense? So, in other words, we evaluate what's happening right now. And we have the idea, okay, this is what I want to do in the future. And so we navigate with a specific solution. So sometimes we got to sit quiet our minds and become succinct in our thoughts. Because when we're succinct in our thoughts, things happen naturally. And that's why I believe follow through is the most valuable asset that we as a leader can have. So that gives us the ability then to confidently say yes when somebody has a great idea. That's a great idea. Let's work together and make it happen. But also more importantly, it also gives us the ability to say no. Why? Because we have the future in mind. We have the idea that this is where I want to go. And, and if the idea that comes to our desk 
doesn't flow with the vision that God has given us, then we can honestly say, you know what, this this doesn't fit with our vision as leaders. This doesn't fit with the vision of the church and the direction that I believe God is wanting us to go. And so it allows us to have respect for those around us, but it also allows us to shake things up from time to time. And so what I want you to do is take the moment, take a moment and actually think about the idea of saying no to somebody. <laughs> that is a tough thing to do because people always want to hear yes from their leaders. But sometimes we have to say, no, this is the direction I want to go. Even though they think it should be an obvious yes. See, leaders understand that the right thing to do And the hard thing to do are often the same thing. And so when we decide that this is the direction I want to go, and and sometimes saying no to somebody is really, really hard. No, I, I, I can't do that because this is not the vision that we have right now. And so sometimes the hard thing to do is the right thing to do. You see, leading effectively demands accountability. We have to set clear goals. We have to get that path that others aren't going to completely understand. And so this is where accountability comes into play. And I believe as leaders, we need to have an accountability partner that we can go to. And we can say, hey, I I, I need some advice in this area. And this is this is what I'm I'm really wanting to do. Do you think it's a good idea? And sometimes our accountability partner may say, you know, I don't know, I can't answer that for you. But here's what I would do if I was in your position. And sometimes just having that little bit of advice goes such a long way. And then we can start making an educated guess. We can start facilitating a collaboration with somebody else and and start putting that into play, putting it into action. And sometimes we find that eh, it probably wasn't a very good idea We scrap the idea and we start over. And sometimes the biggest lessons that we can learn is by making a mistake and learning from that mistake. You see, as creatives, as leaders, and even as as, as leaders in our own home, and and I think this, this also goes to just people who are leaders in their own home, we have the power within ourselves to control a choice. We have a choice. We could choose to act. We could choose what we're going to pursue. We could choose when and how we're going to follow through. But the question is, what are we going to choose? Are we going to choose the easy path, the path of least resistance? But maybe it doesn't give you the biggest bang for your buck. Or maybe, just maybe it doesn't give you the desired outcome that you were looking for. That's why I think the right thing to do is sometimes always the hard thing to do. See, the power of choice, how we're going to act, how what are we going to pursue? See, if we want to continue to lead a life of purpose, we have to live on purpose. You see, at Life Church, a church that I uh, help pastor at, we have a, a, a threefold purpose, and that is to love God, serve people, and share Christ. And, and if anything falls outside of these three purposes, we don't do it. And so to lead a life of purpose, you have to live on purpose. So you have to know what your purpose is. That way you can follow through with your purpose. And so when I did my reader survey for jbcism.com, there's some things that I learned. I learned so much about you who read my blog. And I learned that, that most of you are pastors or business leaders. You're wanting leadership tips. You're wanting devotionals so that your spirit can be filled up. And these are the things that I'm focusing on. These are the things I want to give you to help you become a better leader. And most of this leadership experience that I'm giving you, I'm learning as I go. And so I think what's great about Crosstalk and what's great about my blog is it's a self-discovery with each other. 
I help you, you help me. And leadership is often that way. We grow together, we learn together, and we pursue life together. You see, sometimes we have to take the hard choice. And whatever that hard choice is, we have to follow through. If that hard choice is a yes, and we have to figure out how we're going to make the cogs in the machine work, then that's what we have to do. But if the choice is no, we have to understand that we have to lift that person up and not, not put them off because maybe they had not a very good idea. But we want to build them up and help them become a better leader. Because leaders not only lead, but leaders teach leaders how to lead. And that's what it's all about. That's why the choice of leadership is so important. So, so important. So take the time to figure out what your hard choices are going to be and follow through with them. Find somebody you can collaborate with and figure out how you can work together in achieving success in your ministry, in your family, and more importantly, in your personal life. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to today's podcast. I'm so glad that you were here. And if this podcast blessed you, I pray that you would take it and give it to somebody. Email it to a friend so that they too can be blessed, so that they can have the best leadership experience, the best ministry experience they can. Let it be a refreshing drink of water for them. Well, as always, my name is Jason Sism. Thank you again for listening to Crosstalk. And until next time, be blessed.